Check. Ready? Good morning, everyone. Good to see everyone here with us this morning. And welcome to church services here at the Franklin Church of Christ. <clears throat> Please, uh, if you're joining us on Facebook Live, make sure you like and share the page. Um, just so for some of you that uh, do go home and maybe watch it or you know other people that have been watching we've been having a little bit of problems with facebook and we're trying to figure those out but please remember uh after our services are done we take that recording from that was on facebook live and it goes on our youtube page and then all you have to do is go on the youtube page and press the subscribe button there and it'll send you a notification but it usually gets on there about about 12 o'clock, 12.30, right after church services. So if you can't find it on Facebook, I know a few people did last week, couldn't find it on the uh, on going back and going back to the page. It is on YouTube, and you can find it there and watch uh, services there with maybe your family and friends this afternoon or whenever you do that. Also, uh, please fill out one of the connection cards that's in the pew in front of you. That's for all of our church family and also our guests. Please pass it to the center aisle, and then we'll have some of our young men come down. And please, right there for our guest only, uh, that's our new QR code. You can scan it here on the screen behind me, or it's also there in the Pathfinder on the back uh, page that you can scan that and fill that information online on that online connection card. Today is our last the Leaders kickoff. Uh, we have a table set up out in the foyer. It's, it would be when you go out the doors to the left. So we'd like for all the kids and adults to stop by and look at that. There's one sign-up sheet there to sign up for different areas there's some booklets there that you can uh ask some questions or look for maybe some answers some questions you might have but with, this is always a fun exciting time to get started the convention is in april april 7th through the 9th there in louisville kentucky and also this is a time for not only our kids uh to get involved but more adults to get involved and last leaders is and even if you don't go to the convention it's also a good activity just to build confidence and uh and uh, not only individually, but also as a church family. So I'd like for everybody to take that opportunity and stop by that table. We're going to have a formal meeting on Sunday, November 27th. So we'll, please, kids, stop by. If you have any more questions about that, I'll be out in the foyer after church services. You can stop and see me, and uh, we'll, we'll discuss last years, and then we'll get going and get ready for the convention coming up very soon next, uh, next spring. Also, after church services, uh, the Young Family Ministries will have a meeting down front here in the auditorium. And it's also concerning anyone interested in helping with the breakfast with Santa. So please stay for this meeting uh, run by uh, Jenna and Travis Utley. And uh, anyone that signed up during the ministry fair, or if you didn't even sign up, please come to this meeting and learn more about some opportunities you uh, can get involved with. The Lewis Manor Ladies Bible Class trip is this coming Tuesday. Uh, for more information on that, you can see Miss Nell Jordan after church services. Also, thank you. I've had a lot of people running up to me today or walking up to me today and giving me money for the uh, Thanksgiving food boxes. We'll be um, getting those ready next Sunday. We are going to be helping 20 families. And this year, uh, this is a little bit new this year. Uh, in years past, we've been getting our family names from the school system. Um, they had a anonymous donor take all their names so we had to come up with a new uh, idea and what we're going to do we're going to help uh, 20 of the families that we have helped throughout the year maybe with an electric bill rent bill and a lot of those are widows uh, or single ladies or single parents and we're going to be helping those families and we've picked out 20 that we're going to help so we do still need money for this the food cost has been going up and uh, so we need your help if you cannot find me after church, I did put the black box on the round table out here to the your right when you exit on the round table. If you can't find me, just drop it in that black box, and all monies would be appreciated uh, for those 20 boxes next week. And if you'd like to help uh, with that, uh, packing the boxes, we're going to be doing that next Sunday at 1.30, and there's some information there in the Pathfinder about that as well. Friendsgiving will be at uh, Eli's house on uh, next Sunday, November 20th, from 5.30 to 7.30. And I believe uh, Keith and Sonia is in charge of that. So if you need more information about that, just see them. But please, uh, kids and parents, make sure you're aware of that next Sunday, November 20th. 
On Wednesday night, November 30th, we're going to be getting for, ready for Room in the Inn 2023. We have taken every Sunday night in January and February where we'll be hosting uh, homeless in our community. And we need people to be volunteers, whether it's either serving food, cleaning, uh, cleaning cots, or cleaning up after uh, our nights. Uh, we need people to stay during the evenings and uh, just lots of different things. So we'll be meeting at 6 p.m. on November 30th to discuss more about that in that meeting. And then we did mention a while ago, please remember Breakfast with Santa. Saturday, uh, December 10th, we'll be starting to advertise this to our community so you know people in the community. This is an outreach for our church, and we'd love to uh, have uh, our fellowship hall uh, filled that night, or filled that day, excuse me, with kids and, uh, and get to know families and maybe show off Sunshine Street and other things during that day. Again, thank you again for your uh, attendance today. We uh, are grateful that you're here. If everyone please stand, we'll join Colton in leading us in our first song. I stand to praise you, but I fall on my knees. My spirit is willing, but my flesh is so the fire in my soul, fan the flame, make me whole. Lord, you know where I've been, so light the fire in my heart again. I feel your arms fire in my soul, fan the flame, make me whole. Lord, you know where I've been, so light the fire in my heart again. Please be seated. Let us pray. Father in heaven, you are so good to us. Father, what a blessing it is to wake up this morning to gather together here in fellowship with the community here. Father, we just pray that you bless our time spent together here. Father, at this time we're mindful of those who are not in attendance with us, with us this morning, whether it's physical, spiritual needs that they have. Father, we just pray that that you're able to meet them where they are this morning, that in all things, in their lives and in ours, that, that your will will be done. Father, we just pray that you continue to, to bless this church. Uh, there's so many activities, so many ministries, so many people that are working so very hard in this church to further your kingdom, Father. Father, again, as we go about our services, we just pray that you bless us as we continue to glorify and to praise your name. Father, I pray that in our assembly this morning that, that we might light the fire Father, that our souls might be touched, that our hearts might be touched, that as we leave here today, that we can go out into the world rejuvenated and excited, full of your spirit, Lord, willing to share that, that love with those that we come in contact with. Father, just continue to be with us, continue to watch over us. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. How deep the Father's love for us, how vast beyond all measure, that he should give his only Son to make a wretch his Stay so away as wounds with. 
which Martha chose one, bring many sons to glory. Behold the man upon a cross, his sin upon his shoulders. Ashamed I hear my mocking voice call out among the scoffers. It was my sin that held him there until it was accomplished. His dying breath has brought me life. I know that it is finished. I will not boast in anything, no gifts, no power, no wisdom, but I will boast in Jesus Christ, his death and resurrection. Why should I gain from his reward? I cannot give an answer, but this I know have paid my ransom. We're gathered around this table today so that we'll remember the great sacrifice was made for each of us on that cross on Calvary. Sacrifice made for the remission of our sins by Jesus Christ, nothing that he had done, no sins of his, but for sins of mankind. And why we do this? We do this so we remember. Memory is a gift from God. Some memories bring happiness and a smile to our face. Other memories make us sad when we think about them. But all memories, whether good or bad, serve a purpose in our lives. God has a great memory he has known us at the, from the very beginning. However, when we do wrong and our heart is right, he blots the wrong out of his memory. He could choose to remember all their sin, but that is not our God. The Bible records many stories where people thought he had forgotten them, but at the right moment, he is there to rescue them. He remembered us by sending his only begotten son to save us. He remembers us through his death to continually forgive and cleanse us through his grace. He remembers us as he sits at the right hand of God where he's preparing a place for us. For we gather around this table, may we do our part in remembering him. Would you pray with me, please? Dear God, we're so grateful for this Lord's Day that we have to come together here to worship thee. And as part of this worship today, we're thankful to be gathered around this table. May we remember what it means to us that you sacrificed your life on that cross on Calvary for not for the mission of our sins, Father, not anything that you had done. And may we never forget this sacrifice. May we always keep it in our memory. And now as we get ready to partake of this bread, which represents your body that hung on that cross, may we take of it in a worthy manner, in a manner pleasing to thee, for we know we're not worthy to take of it, but may we do so in such a manner that we'll be pleasing to you that you will accept. And through the name of Christ we pray. Amen.
Dear Father, as we continue to be gathered around this table, now we get ready to partake of this fruit of the vine, which represents the blood that you shed on that cross for each one of us. May we reflect back to that sacrifice. May we keep it always in memory, dear Lord. May they take of this offering in such a way that we'd be pleasing, we'd be acceptable to thee. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. At this time, we now find it convenient to give back to the Lord a portion of what he's given to us. We know today that prices are high. Can't hardly afford to go out and buy anything. Inflation's high. People are struggling. But think about when we go to give. What we're given belongs to God anyway. He gives us what we have. And everything we give back to him, whether it's little or whether it's a lot, he will, he's never failed to return to us what we give to him. So let's give in such a way that we please unto him. Dear Lord, we come to you thanking you for all the many blessings that we have. Blessings so many we cannot count. Blessings we don't deserve. Blessings more than we need, but everything we have come from you. We pray as we go to give back a portion of what we've prospered this week, that we will give with a joyous heart, not begrudgingly, give in such a way that will be pleasing and acceptable to thee. And we pray that this money will be used wisely for the further of thy kingdom. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. Today's scripture reading will be from Luke chapter 17, verses 17 through 19. Luke 17, 17 through 19. Jesus asked, Were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Rise and go, faith has made you well. When upon thy pillows you are tempest-tossed, when you are discouraged, thinking all is lost, count your many blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord hath done. Count your blessings, name them one by one, Count your blessings, see what God hath done. Count 
bunch of blessings. Name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God hath done. Are you ever burdened with the Lord of care? Does the cross seem heavy? You are called to bear. Count your many blessings, every doubt will fly, and you will be singing as the days go by. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God hath done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God hath done. So amid the conflict, whether great or small, do not be discouraged, God is over all. Count your many blessings, angels will attend. Help and comfort give you to your journeys in. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God hath done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God hath done. Please stand for the next two songs. He came to live, live a perfect life. He came to be the living word, our life. He came to die so we'd be reconciled. He came to rise to show his power and might. And that's why we praise him. That's why we sing. That's why we offer him our everything. That's why we bow down and worship this king. Because he gave his everything. Because he gave his everything. He came to live, live again in us. He came to be our conquering king and friend. He came to heal and show the lost ones his love. He came to go, prepare a place for us. And that's why we praise him. That's why we sing. That's why we offer him our everything. That's why we bow down and worship this king. Because he gave his everything. Because he gave his everything. Hallelujah. this king cause he gave his everything cause he gave his everything thank you Lord for loving me and thank you Lord for blessing me 
Thank you, Lord, for making me whole and saving my soul. I want to thank you, Lord, for loving me. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Please draw with one accord, sing praises to Christ the Lord. Let us all unite in song to praise him all day long. I want to thank you, Lord, for loving me. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Please reveal your will for me so I can serve you for eternity. Use my life in every way. Take hold of it today. I want to thank you, Lord, for loving me. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Please be seated. Good morning. If you look at your Pathfinder this morning, the, t the title of my lesson was Thanksgiving Song, and, and really, uh, I changed my mind. <laughs> Colton is so good. He, he texts early on Monday morning and wants to know what the, the topic is so he can start preparing his song and he works on his songs all week long before the Sunday. It's just nice to have a guy that, that's prepared and that ready to go. And I gave him the title of my lesson thinking that's what I would preach on today. And I was using the scripture from Luke where Zechariah and Elizabeth had, uh, had the John the Baptist and, and Zechariah wrote a song. And I was going to talk about that song of Thanksgiving because here we are in November. And can you believe it's already 13 days into, where's this month going? Man, it's just passing by so fast. Well, anyway, I had started preparing a, a, a little Thanksgiving presentation around Zechariah's song and found out that I needed to do a little bit more study before I could present that song today. It just did not feel good, so I changed my mind, and I am grateful <laughs> that he wants to be prepared and ready, and then the songs that he selected did go with today's lesson because I want to talk about us being grateful and having a grateful heart. So if you have your Bibles, in just a few minutes, we're going to look at a passage of Scripture together that we're sort of familiar with. It's found in Luke chapter 17, and it'll begin in verse number 11. I think that gratitude is one of the most important Christian virtues that we can have, and I think one of the reasons for that is I believe it pleases God. I believe He is so uh, happy when we're grateful and thankful to him and we express that in the book of hebrews chapter 12 verse 28 it says therefore since we're receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken let us be thankful and so worship god acceptably with reverence and awe you know those of you who are are parents and grandparents isn't it nice when your children or your grandchildren come up to you and say Thank you. It's been such a good day. Thank you. Thank you for what you do for me. And you know, when we hear that, we're so pleased and we're so happy. And I just believe when we tell our Heavenly Father, thank you, God. Thank you so much for loving us. Thank you for giving us your Son. Thank you for taking care of us. Thank you for sheltering us in a time of storm. Thank you for being so good to us. I cannot help but to believe that our Heavenly Father is pleased, just like we experience that. So I, today, I would like to talk about maybe some keys, some keys to happiness. I, I think one of the, the keys to gratitude is personal happiness. And if I were to ask you a question today to grade yourself on a scale of 1 to 10, just how happy are you? And if, it, and if we wrote down 9 or 10, you know, that's just wonderful. And if we wrote less than that, then we would probably try to say, well, due to these circumstances I'm under, I'm just not as grateful as I need to be. You know, there are just some circumstances in my life that's just not so ideal. 
And I know that's hard. And I know that's a contributing factor. But I think that 90% of whether we're contented in this life has to do with the attitude that we have more than the circumstances that we live in. We can decide to be happy. I think also that gratitude is essential for effective leadership. I think, well, that's a, that's a strange for you to say. I, I, just, I just believe that. I, I, I believe whether we're a mother or a father, I believe whether we're the president of the United States, whether we're governor of this state, whatever our role and task is, we can be grateful and we can be thankful and we can express that. And if you remember in the life of Moses, there was a guy and his name was Korah and he wasn't happy. And so he got a group together and, and he, he was mumbling and grumbling. And you know, most of the time, if, if you're going to mumble and grumble and complain, you can draw a crowd. It's, it's easy to do that. You can rally some troops around you if you're wanting to complain about some things. And that's basically what happened to Korah. He was unhappy with Moses and they got up and, and grumbled. But, you know, positive attitude lifts spirits. You know, for the most part, 95% of us today are happy. It's, it's maybe that, that 5% that makes it hard on the rest of us that are happy. So let, let's think about that. So with this in mind this morning, let's, let's get our Bibles and, and let's turn to Luke chapter 17 and let's begin reading in verse 11. Now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. And as he is going to a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. And they stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. Have mercy. Have pity. And when he saw him, he said, Go, show yourself to the priest. And as they went, they were healed. And one of them, when he saw he was healed, came back praising God. In a loud voice. You ever wonder why Luke records for us in detail there that he praised God in a loud voice? Isn't that wonderful? I like it when we're singing together, especially this morning, that last song, Thank You, Lord, for Loving Me. And we, we were all in this, and, and we were singing. This one guy came back, and he praised God with a loud voice. Thank you. He threw himself at Jesus' feet. And he thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. And Jesus asked, were not all the ten cleansed? Where were the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? And then he said to him, rise and go, your faith has made you well. God bless the reading of his word, amen. Isn't that wonderful? Where are the other nine? I remember years ago when I was long, young like many of your children and we'd go to hear Jim Bill speak in a meeting and one of the, the lessons that he had in one of his local meetings was, where are the other nine? And it's a question that I've thought about for quite some time. And it's the one our Lord asked, were there not ten? Where are the other nine? Were they not grateful? And wouldn't you love to conduct an interview with these guys and think, well, why, why didn't you go back and give thanks? Well, we're apt to hear all kinds of things. Well, one might say, well, I did what he said. I went to the priest. That was a legal thing to do. That's what I was required to do. I went there. I fulfilled all of my responsibilities. And notice that, you know, that's a legalistic view. I've never known many people who are legalistic in nature that were very happy. And then another guy might say, well, I went to show myself to my family. I mean, they're the ones that really struggle with this. Not only me, but my family suffers through this too. And then the third guy might say, well, you know, Jesus knows I'm grateful. I didn't know I was supposed to go back and talk to him. I mean, he does this for a living, doesn't he? I mean, hadn't he been healing people for quite some time? Why was it necessary for me to go back and to say thank you? 
another guy says, well, you know, I know I got better. But it might just be a coincidence because I've been taking herbs. And I've been uh, using essential oils. And, and I'm, I think maybe that really had something to do with it. I really don't know if he completely healed me of this. I, I think it could be a coincidence. And maybe he did. I, I don't know for sure. And maybe another guy might say, well, I really don't know that that's to my advantage. I mean, now I'm healed. Now I've got to get up and get a job. Now, now I've got to go to work. Before I could sit around and beg, and, but now I've got to get up and accept this responsibility. And another guy might say, well, I'm healed, but I don't like the way I look. I mean, when I first got this disease, I was 15 years younger, and now that I'm healed, look at me. I'm 15 years older, and I really don't like the way that I look. When he healed me, why didn't he make me look better? I just don't like the way that I look. And another guy might say, well, you know, I am grateful, but it's hard for me to be happy when I think about all the other people in life that have leprosy. I mean, they can't be happy. Why should I be the one happy when they're still struggling? And then another guy might say, well, I, I've just been so busy. I've been on the radio. I've been on the television. I've been interviewed. Now they're going to take all our pictures. They're going to put us on billboards everywhere. Now we'll be famous. I, I didn't know I needed to go tell him thank you because I've just been so busy. Maybe another guy says, you know, I don't know about this Jesus thing. I, I mean, I really don't. It bothers me a little. Because rumor has it that he told a guy to go sell all he has and give it to the poor and come follow him. And I don't know if I'm ready to do that. But out of the ten, only one was grateful. Only one came back and said, thank you. And you know, in that sort of life, as I look at the audience this morning, I, I know many of you have worked in the school system, retired from the school system. You've had many students. Did many come up to you and say, thank you. I'm a better person today because you've taught me. And you know, some have. I, I know some have. I tried to do that. I tried to go back and, and, and tell my teachers, thank you. You had a lot to work with. <laughs> you know, I had a teacher one time to tell me that I wouldn't be worth 50 cents. I'd never be worth 50 cents. I packed a half a dollar in my pocket for years because I was mad at her because she told me I never would be worth 50 cents. And then I grew up. I matured. And I went back to her and thanked her. How childish it was of me to act that way. You know, I went to school because she motivated me to go on to school. And that's the way we do. And you know, why don't you write one of your teachers a note? Thank you. You inspired me. I'm doing what I'm doing today because of you. And just say thank you. You know, uh, how many of you go up to your elders and say thank you? I appreciate what you do. You're doing volunteer work. We're asking a lot of you. You give your time. Thank you so much. You know, they'll work harder if you'll do it. I promise they will. Why don't you go up to them today and say, you know, we love you. We appreciate you. Thank you so much. Thank you for leading us. Thank you for leading our church. Thank you for shepherding us. Thank you for praying for us. Thank you for everything you do. We'd sure be a better people if we did that. Now, why don't you look at other works? Or, I mean, we're just full of, of opportunities to tell people thank you. The guys in the AV room, they're volunteers. Let's thank them. Every Sunday morning, Keith Pettit has a list of men that's willing to serve. Some did not call him and say, you know, I'm not going to be here. So he's had to fill in spots, and, and he makes sure that, that everything runs smoothly here for worship. It'd be great if we said thank you. I'm going to say thank you, but 
let's say thank you. How about those that teach class here? Sunshine Street. Uh, adult classes. Let's say thank you. Let's be grateful. Let's show it. You know, have you ever been at home and maybe for breakfast and <laughs> maybe we don't eat breakfast together much anymore, I don't know, but but if you if you did, wouldn't it wouldn't it be unusual for your child to come up and go, you know, mom, thanks. Thanks for washing my clothes. Thanks for folding them. Thanks for putting them in my drawers. Thank you for putting them away. Thank you for making my bed, putting on clean sheets. Thank you for everything you do for me. Wouldn't it be great if you heard, hey, Dad, thanks. Thanks for everything you do. You work hard, probably more than one job. Thank you. Let's be grateful. Let's share that. Now, you might have a heart attack if they did because you haven't been used to it. But, hey, we'll get over it if you'll just do it. Let's just learn to be grateful. So let's look at some contributing factors, maybe, as to, as to what causes ingratitude. We're talking about being grateful. Now let's talk about what causes us to be ungrateful. William Barclay wrote, So often, once a man has got what he wants, he never comes back. I, I believe that to be true. I don't know why we're not more grateful people. We have a tendency to be like the other nine rather than being like the Good Samaritan. So I, I believe uh, that privileged upbringing does that. I, I think another reason is affluence. You know, generally speaking, we have more than we're capable of being thankful. You ever think about that? We have so many things. We've been blessed so much. Um, it's sort of like cable television. You know, when we lived on Rolling Road Drive and moved to Main Street, I was trying to make a decision on what to do about cable television. Now, isn't that a major decision we need to make in life? I used to have over 200 channels when I lived on Nature Drive, and then when I came over here, you know, we went for several weeks with just an antenna. Do you know you can live with just an antenna? You can almost see as many shows as, <laughs> except for some sports games if you're addicted to that. But uh, I just decided, you know, I just don't need as many as I used to have. And I just really haven't missed them. Things have gone on real well. It's sort of like uh, those who are uh, blessed to go to Hawaii on vacation and come back and somebody invites you to go to Barren River and you're going, Barren River? You can have just as much fun doing a vacation at Barren River. Just think about these things. Proverbs chapter 30, verse 8 says, Keep falsehood and lies far from me. Give me neither poverty nor riches, but give me only my daily bread. Otherwise, I may have too much and disown you and say, Who is my Lord? Or I may become poor and steal and so dishonor the name of my God. Another contributing factor is negative companions. In Proverbs chapter 13, verse 20, it says, Walk with the wise and become wise, for a companion of fools suffers harm. I hope your closest friends are positive people about the church. If they're not, think about that. You might need to choose some new friends. If you associate with people that are always negative, always complaining, pretty soon you're going to look for all the things that are going wrong, and you won't find as many nearly as many things that, are, that, that could make you happy. You remember the movie Grumpier Old Men? Now, that's, that's been quite some time ago. Walter Matthau and, and uh, Jack Lemon. Thank you. They sort of played off each other, didn't they? Do we have a tendency to do that? In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33, it says, Bad company corrupts good character. I read this from a leadership conference that was attended. It says, a good leader 
gets rid of sad dogs that spread gloom. Just one sad dog in the office, just one sad dog on a team, just one sad dog in a family can sour everything. And it doesn't matter how fulfilling your job is, how spacious your home is, how personable your maid is, or edifying your church is if you associate with sad dogs. Think about that. And then another contributing factor is frequent comparisons. I think one of the things that can destroy happiness is if we try to compare ourselves to others. I've always been told that, told that if you try to keep up with the Joneses and you finally get what they have, you find out that they've been refinanced. I mean, you can't win at, at all here. So don't, don't struggle to do that. Don't, don't compare your circumstances with other people. The, don't discount the fact that uh, you can be happy with what you have just because their kids might be smarter, just because they might be better athletes, just because... Because somebody does things a little bit better. She might have a little bit more Bible knowledge than you. Or he might know things that you don't. Don't compare yourselves so much to others. You can be happy. Look what the writer in 2 Corinthians says. We do not dare to classify or compare ourselves with some who commend themselves. When they measure themselves by themselves and compare themselves with themselves, they are not wise. So what can we do to help us practice gratitude? Well, there are all kinds of things we consider this morning, but I want us to consider four today. One, acknowledge everything belongs to God. It's not yours. In Psalm chapter 24, verse 1, it says, The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world the world and all who live in it. Nothing we have belongs to us. It belongs to God. He just loans it to us. We're just here temporarily. And one of these days we're going to leave it all behind. You know, it, it, it wasn't but just a, two or three weeks ago I overheard a conversation by some here that talked about that when this person passed away that he would try to have a trailer hooked to the hearse. And, and bring things with him. You know, we just can't do that. You know, everything belongs to God. We're just here for a short time. And then the second thing, avoid grumbling and complaining. You know, when you study about Moses, the children of Israel just griped and complained that they grumbled. First it was no water. Then it was, you know, too much. Too many, they got tired of quail. Too much manna. You know, let's go back to Egypt. We're just so unhappy here. And the Lord became angry. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 10, it says, Do not grumble as some of them did and were killed by the destroying angel. Philippians 2, verse 4, one you ought to underline if you do this. Do everything, it says, without grumbling or complaining. You ever disobey that command? I'm afraid I do. But grumbling is an offense to God. He's not happy with us. It's a poor testimony to the lost. And it's a detriment to your personality. And you know, <clears throat> I, I never hear anybody say, well, let's go over to Bubba's house. He complains all the time, and I just love to hear him complain. Let's go over there. Do we? No, we don't. And then let's express thanks frequently. In 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 18, the writer there says, Give thanks in all circumstances, <clears throat> for this is God's will in you in Christ Jesus. Do you know that if you own just one Bible, I, I don't know how many I own, but if you own just one, a third of the world does not have access to one 
just think about how blessed we are. And if you can read your Bible, and we've challenged many of you to read your Bibles through this year, and, and if you can, just think about how blessed you are because there's still 2 billion people in this world that can't even read. Think about that. And if you woke up this morning with more health than illness, you're blessed. You think about that because one million people won't survive this week. This week. You think about that. If you have food in your refrigerator, if you have clothes on your back, if you have a roof over your head and you have $20, $20 in your pocket, do you know that you're richer than 80% of the people in the world? Be thankful. Be grateful. You know, I, when I talk about some of these things, I've My, my wife's in, in Lexington today. I told the class this morning that um, my granddaughter is in Special Olympics this afternoon in Lexington. And so Janet and Leslie and others have gone up there to, to be with her and help her celebrate. So I was home alone and I was studying this lesson and I was thinking about this four points that we were making. And... I thought about the people in the Ukraine. And you know, um, sometime with that, I don't know how to pray. I shed a tear over that, trying to pray for these. I, I didn't know what, to, I didn't know how to pray. And I, I was just so glad to know that the Spirit utters words for us when we have trouble praying because I, I sure wanted to pray the right thing. And when I read over these stats that I, that I just shared with you, and then I think about those, how, how do we pray for that? But we should, and we need to because we are, we are so blessed. And right now, it, it's hard for those people to find a blessing. And I hope that we'll be a blessing to them and, and pray for them. And then live a joyful life. 1 Timothy 6 verse 17 says, Command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant, nor to put their hope in wealth, which is so uncertain, but to put their hope in God who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. So after you've been blessed... And after you thanked God, be joyful with it. Psalm 30 says, You turned my wailing into dancing. You've removed my sackcloth and clothed me with joy that my heart may sing your praise and not be silent. Lord my God, I will praise you forever. So in closing this morning, In John chapter 3, in verse 16, For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have eternal life. God loved us so much that He gave His Son. Have you said thanks? God, thank you. And if you're not in a position this morning to where you can, think about this. He's given us eternal life. Please do not let the sin of ingratitude keep you from eternal life. And if we can pray for you and with you this morning, we want to. If you want to be buried with him in the waters of baptism and have your name added to the Lamb's book of life, have your sins washed away, have the Holy Spirit placed upon you, we'll give you that opportunity. Whatever your needs are this morning, please come while we stand and sing. 
There's a fountain free, tis for you and me. Let us haste, oh, haste to its brink. Tis the fount of love from the source above, and he bids us all freely drink. Will you come to the fountain free? Will you come? Tis for you and me, thirsty soul. Hear the welcome call. Tis a fountain open for all. There's a living stream with a crystal gleam from the throne of life now it flows while the waters roll let the weary soul hear the call that forth freely goes will you come to the fountain free. Will you come? Tis for you and me, thirsty soul. Hear the welcome call. Tis a fountain open for all. There's a rock that's cleft and no soul Tis for you and me, and in stream I see. Let us hasten joyfully there. Will you come to the fountain free? Will you come? Tis for you. Thirsty soul, hear the welcome call. Tis a fountain open for all. Let's pray. Dear Father, again, we thank you so much for today, and we thank you for the many blessings. We're thankful for us to rise up and serve you today and dear father in our service to you let's be grateful for everything we have let's take from the lesson steve gave us today and learn from the things that we need to do and the things we don't need to do in our lives to be ungrateful dear father and we're, we're just so grateful for everything that we are as christians and can be as christians because of the of the great thing that you did for us and that's sending your son uh, for our sins dear father we thank you so much for him, we thank you so much for the gospel message. We thank you so much for this church family and other churches around the, the world, our brothers and sisters in Christ around the world meeting today and learning how to be the best we can be for you in our everyday lives. Thank you again, for all this in your son's name. Amen.